Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. I hope you're listening to this at night. You're supposed to. If you haven't been listening to this at night every time, we're kind of upset. Yeah, that's not how the canon is supposed to work, okay? This is Style and Direction, a nighttime podcast to help you fall asleep. That's the name of the podcast. <laughs> I, I think I've said it maybe on stream, but I know like at least two of my friends say, I don't care about the subject matter, but I do listen to you guys when I fall asleep. And I'm like, yeah, I appreciate if you, the support. If you didn't, listening to like random like hobby podcasts is a good way to uh, fall asleep. So, you know, maybe we could like cultivate, like if the menswear thing doesn't work out, we can still talk about menswear, but we just market ourselves as a sleep podcast. Well, is this, is this one of those things where we have to do it our, our ASMR uh, we should, podcast? We should do an all AS, I think the bonus, like a bonus episode that was all ASMR, the people would want that. The, um, people want us to tickle their heads or whatever. <laughs> tickle, tickle your heads. Yeah, that's what ASMR does. It's head we ticklers. Can, we can like we can like push like like little like these are flannel trousers and just put them across the, the microphone. <laughs> yeah, what is a like ASMR uh, menswear ASMR would be like taking a brush and like po- I mean you could do like shoe polishing like sh- like polishing or yeah yeah you um, could do the the crunch of a silk knit tie or something you know yeah that, that, that's something but uh-huh. untying a tie I don't know I don't know if there that makes go. I guess that makes sound I don't know if like fastening a button makes a sound i don't know if that's a thing this is do you, you know the the john mulaney and the sack lunch bunch like the song with uh jake gyllenhaal where he's he's singing about how everything makes music but then he does a bunch of things that doesn't actually make sounds <laughs> no i don't remember that it's like uh, it's a big finale that's what oh. we'd be doing i gotta, I gotta, Jake gyllenhaal. I gotta rewatch that i've been like on a uh i think you should leave kick again just because it's throughout that yeah time, you know i think uh i saw that they're starting to film or they're, they're like in the middle of filming season two i think as someone uh who's in the cast like posted a, posted a photo from the set so uh i i t y s l season two it's coming yeah and you guys should know that we we love our comedy um we love comedy we love to laugh ha 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 it sounds like more like you're you're like you're proving something or you're like <laughs> well I'm proving I've I've been exposed as a comedy lover. <laughs> expose yourself. Yeah, exposed myself I as a started, comedy lover. I actually started watching uh, Portlandia for the first time in full because mm. I think I watched it in college, but like in the background. But I never like yeah. sat down and watched it. And I did watch the episode where it's like the alt the alt band like festival. And oh um, the the fest like the gentle bands battle of the gentle bands or something like that something like that and there's like a girl who keeps trying to go to uh like i'm on the list and the girl you're on the list and she goes to like each venue and then she ends up going yep. to he goes oh yeah there's a place called alaska you'll check it out and then she goes to alaska <laughs> <laughs> it's really it's really funny first time i'm watching it it's definitely like a very 2011 type of humor yeah. you know it's very early very yeah i haven't i haven't watched it again but i mean that was i, I love that show in high school uh, and I still watch like some clips on YouTube. I like all the the stuff with Kumail is pretty good. Oh, he always does like he always he's like shows up regularly, and he always does this like weird. He's this weird like bureaucratic like uh, waiter or like retail guy. Yeah, who's like yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. before you purchase this, you have to do all this, and it's always yeah, a do fun you want, bit. Do you, want, do you want the data plus plan or do you want the data unlimited plan? Let's see. The data yeah. plus plan has texting <laughs> on weekends. <laughs> I, yeah, it was. It's I. I you know it was funny because my mom and we'll get to the topic in a second. Thank you guys. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, um, thank you for keeping us on track. <laughs> all the people that are yelling at us yeah. from outside our studio. <laughs> studio. Have we have we talked about have we joked about this? How we want to get like you know how on like the Today Show or whatever yeah. you see all the people behind. The glass we need that. with signs. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. we want that. Yeah, it's like sad, just like in, in big old, you know, in big old letters yeah. on like a little cardboard thing. Um, but my mom said uh, she did realize that uh, for, I think you should leave. Hey, this guy who just like takes a situation and makes it like he's usually stubborn and just expands on it. I'm like, yep. yes, you get it. That's, <laughs> That's it. it. That's it. And so, and then, yeah, I think she's trying to get like my type of humor because she likes the rest of development. But I mean, uh huh. You know, it's uh, there's there's more Arrested to it Development. I mean, it's still, like it's it's more straightforward, That's I right. guess, than um, I think you should leave, and it relies less on like cringe humor, which you yeah, know, I think you should leave is is a lot of that. Yeah, but it's not like Eric Andre cringe. It's like kind of mm-hmm. like it's a lot more of like regular situation, but like just a little bit expanded. It's heightened. 
Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, this is okay. If we ever do like a live show and you think Inspector and I interact with you, just know that we're always doing a bit, so don't feel <laughs> weird <laughs> that we're like laughing to ourselves about something. Yeah, we're always doing bits. I, I feel like. I think I've met a couple people and I do like a joke and they're like, "What?" <laughs> and I'm like, "No, never mind." Yeah, it's like, it's even t- it's even tougher when you start like texting someone and like you know you're like texting like a new friend mm-hmm, or acquaintance mm-hmm. or whatever because that it's even harder to convey dry humor over text. <laughs> like yeah. I was I like I was in a I was like someone shared like something with me that was about like a bunch of worms, uh, prehistoric <laughs> worms being woken up from a from an ice coma. After like you know thirty five hundred years or something crazy like that, and I just said it's like that's not prehistoric. First of all, thirty five hundred years. Okay, whatever. Like longer than that. Um, But somewhat like you know they were they brought back these worms to life that had been frozen, and I and I said it's like imagine being a PhD and your job is to wake up worms, and they thought I was being serious and like didn't get why it was cool. How, okay, yeah, maybe maybe it's not uh, maybe it's not us, maybe it's the others. Okay, maybe they just they're yeah. not funny. Okay, well, speaking maybe. of not funny, let's talk about <clears throat> the, the funniest shirt of all time. Well, or the funnest <laughs> shirt, <laughs> more like it. That's right. It's it is the funniest. That the yeah. shirt preferred by clowns. We're gonna be talking about the Oxford cloth button down and by extension just button down collar shirts in general. And yeah, if, some uh, people some people get pedantic about this, and I love to be pedantic sometimes, but. Um, Wait, on this feet? one, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Podiatric? Um, Podiatric. But yeah, so it's we're going to be talking about just shirts with button-down collars. So if we yes. use the term denim OCBD or chambray or cotton, whatever, we know it's not technically an OCBD. The, we know what OCBD stands for. And It's I just think, easier to say that. <laughs> I think the reason why also is that for the sake of cross-referencing and archiving my outfits, I just put denim OCBD in my in my tags. Yeah. So, because I'm not gonna put, I'm not gonna type out. But I mean, you know, if you guys are in, in uh, about you know archiving your files, once you start adding like oh navy jacket button down collar, it starts to get too long. You gotta you gotta show OCBD is fine, you know. And more mm-hmm. often than not, sometimes it is an actual OCBD, but sometimes you got a denim one. It doesn't fucking matter, you know. Yeah, it's just, um, it's like cut the same. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, it's just the cloth that's different. I get you can maybe maybe oh, it should be different. I don't know. I don't know. Fuck that, dude. We could, we're not going to say DCBD or CCBD, whatever, or CCP. <laughs> Wait, is that no, or CCP. CCP? Yeah, not 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 just two of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, but anyway, this is Style and Direction, a mentor podcast without the stuffiness. I am your host Ethan M Wong, and I'm your host Spencer Adi. That's right. So let's let's get into it here. Uh, so the Obviously, the shirt's been around for a fucking long, long time. Okay. Yeah. Um, a lot of guys use it today. Um, it's it's kind of got this weird thing of like it's it's like the old man collar for some reason. Like it's it's simultaneously. Well, I think I think today it's interesting because it's like it's still like a very menswear thing, but it's also so like mainstream. Like in the different the difference is obviously just going to be like the collar shape and everything. And the size and the like, length. Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, j- like, for a lot of people, OCBDs are probably, like, a very, like, OJ Crew, you know, Banana Republic Vineyard vibe. Untuck it, yeah, kind of Exactly, thing. kind of thing, where it's like, oh, this is what I wear to the office with my, like, slim fit chinos and my, like, tan shoes, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then, of course, to, like, the menswear guys, it has a very different... I mean, it's still kind of similar. It's still, like, the everyman menswear shirt, but it has this, it has a slightly different connotation. Yeah, yeah, so quick quick thing on it right it's like um for a while men had starched detachable collar shirts Mm -hmm. and then uh you started getting soft collar shirts like the late 1800s you know i mean it it, they they had them but it probably didn't catch on to like like, the 1910s or something like that you know yeah i guess brief history attached collar shirts were the norm then in the like early or mid 19th century someone invented detachable collar shirts and then they were the norm for like the next hundred years and then it switched Um, back again yeah um, and so, uh, yeah, when you look at some of these images from the, that I've included in the show notes, or technically it's an essay, because that's just how it is, um, but you do see it, it's like, it's almost like a sport shirt back in the day, right? Like, yeah, you had, like, your wing collar shirts, your spread collar shirts, you know, mm-hmm. stiff or not. I mean, it and, literally, and it literally was a sport shirt. Yeah, yeah, you wore it to play, like, cricket, I think is, uh, the commonly begin, um, that's what, like, people... 
say like the really niche histor- menswear story say it's actually not polo or tennis it's cricket and you see mm-hmm. images and illustrations of cricket players with like really wild like they're really fat kind of you know they're you know there's not a lot of role to it because they didn't, um, some of them didn't wear ties uh when playing um but yeah you see that a lot mark twain has one which is crazy mm-hmm. like and it looks like he has it unbuttoned and it looks like no it looks like a fucking regular shirt and in, in my head mark twain is like some old guy wearing like a white suit with like a string tie or something like colonel sanders yeah. i guess or maybe i'm getting them both confused <laughs> colonel sanders and i don't mark think twain. i don't think that does mark twain wear a string tie what i always think is funny is like i don't think he started wearing like the white suits until like the last like 10 years before he died yeah. So he had like he had his whole life to dress, but then we only remember from him from when he was an old old man. Yeah, I wonder what other. We think we were going to be like that. What if what if when we die, you know, we're going to be remembered for like the last thing we wore, bespoke yeah, shoes, the last, bespoke the, literally shoes. the last thing we wore. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, there goes Spencer. He always wore bespoke shoes. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a flex when you die, then, right? Like, that's yeah, kind exactly. Of like, yeah. But um, I, you know it does suck if you get bespoke shoes because I think most of the time they bury people barefoot, um, so you're not gonna be able to wear them. I'm gonna put it in my will. Okay, there you go. I don't know if that's how wills work. Does it tell you <laughs> exactly how you are dressed when you die? I think you probably could dictate that. I mean, also it's like, what if what if your family says never mind and then they they take them right? Like you won't know. <laughs> you won't. Know. Yeah, it's like no fuck this guy. I wanted these shoes. <laughs> um so yeah like the old shirts they were they were caught they were oxford um and sometimes they were even like cotton flannel or cotton wool flannel stuff like that because they, they, yeah they were sport shirts and mm-hmm. uh the story goes right that like that john brooks was like in england seeing polo players or cricket players or whoever had it at that time had these you know button down collars he's like i'm gonna fucking steal that because i'm an american man and then he like <laughs> popularized it like the early like the 1900s or whatever Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then at some point, like you know, yeah, you see the tennis players wearing them, like you know, uh, there's but like there's I think there's even button down collar polos, I think at, at some point, like or like or half yeah. placket shirts back in the early days. Um, I and mean, then, I, all, most OCBDs were like half placket up until like the 40s, like 40s or 50s, I think. Yeah, they didn't, sometimes they didn't even have a a a, a, a breast pocket most, too, right? Yeah, most it, like the standard like Oxford Brooks shirt for the first like. I don't know, 30 years of its history was like half placket, no pocket. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. And some of them, like, I, I've seen some of the pictures, I think I've included it. Like, the roll is so inconsistent, too. Like, sometimes it looks so, mm-hmm. like, flat down, like, you know, triangular, like, 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 a, like a point collar. And sometimes yeah. you see it, you know, with like a little bit of a roll there. So it's, it's one of those things where... And um, I, th- I think it was, it was like that for like all of its history. Because I remember in uh, Ame Tora, there's a section... I think it's Ame Tora. And they're, yeah. they're talking about, like, the 40s or 50s. Um, and But they're talking about, like, the, the differences in collar styles in America. And they talk about, it's like, oh, yeah, there were some collars that had to be, like, packaged a special way because the collars rolled so much and were so tall, even with lying flat. And then there were some that were, like, very short, like, you know, the J. Crew collars we have today. So, yeah, yeah I mean... There was always a big variety. Yeah, in the 1930s, there's a couple of Esquire images that I cl- included. That's like the collar looks so small; it's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, and it's it's really funny. I mean, you know, maybe we're a little bit of hypocrites because we both like you know long collars and everything. But saying like accuracy isn't always the case because there's so much variation. Like, like as I've seen, like after we talked about the spear point collar, when there is still also variations in how much curve, how much spread, yeah. how tall the collar is. So, it's really it's really quite wild. Um, but anyway, speaking of the 30s, so at that point, it became kind of like an alternative to the spear point. Like, you see a lot of images, a lot of illustrations, Lawrence Fellows, all those guys um, in the apparel arts wearing uh, button-down collars. And mm-hmm. and you would think, oh, well, it's a casual sports shirt. Like, no, these guys wore it with suits. They wore it with, like, double-breasted I, jackets. Yeah. It's, and I think it's, I think like the only difference was, like, in these illustrations, these people typically, you were, usually weren't, like, at work. Like, they weren't drawn at work, so it seems like yeah. it might have been a thing to do, like, out of the office. 
Yeah, I mean, so I guess at that point you could call it casual, but of course today where casual means not a suit, you know, you could probably make mm-hmm. that, that connotation there. But yeah, like these guys wore, like I, I, I distinctly remember seeing it with like white trousers, like suede bucks, DB jacket. I've seen it with like, you know, tweed stuff and, and like pinstripes, pinstripe suits even. Mm-hmm. And um, and we'll probably get into this in the future article about the, about the apparel arts golden era. But like the hashtag menswear back then was like called the esquire man and they the way when you read these illustrations like the copy for it it's like yeah the esquire man prefers this thing and it's like that Mm -hmm. and so you saw all of like yeah like the the real esquire men would wear like a button-down collar with like a db suit that's why you saw like like fred astaire who you know is often touted as being very uh, like a classic dresser he was very on trend for like almost every era of uh, you know like yeah he was he was like yeah he was like uh very trendy like he he did like but he did he wore like ocbds with collar pins yeah um i mean this is unrelated but he 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 did like a necktie as a belt which is still a pretty baller move yeah yeah he did it was a lot of that stuff there's and and you can also see like in those different pictures like the different roles that he has there's like some that's like Mm -hmm. super spread and everything um, you know, yeah, Cary Grant wore some. Um, it was, you know, it was one of those things where when you look back through history, it's actually a lot more nuanced in how you wore it than like today or or how like hardcore Ivy yeah. guys would. Because, yeah, now I, I'm sure like most people, I mean, it's like I'm not going to fault anyone for not knowing the complete history of the OCBD. But I think if you ask most menswear guys, they would say, oh, yeah, it started off. It started by Brooks Brothers and was popular with college students. And that would be like, yeah, about it. Well, that's, um, but yeah, it's a very deep history. Yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, it. right? The, the, there is truth that it's a collegiate thing because it is represented a lot oh, yeah. in the college. You still, I mean, yeah. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. There's still so many illustrations that's like, here's the young man at college, and he's wearing Joe like, College. CBD. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I, did, I saw one where it was like, here's Joseph College, and I'm like, that's kind of a fun way to say that. <laughs> but yeah, they do say yeah. like, and and they're wearing like, yeah, tweed jackets. Um, you know, blazers, a tattersall, like knitwear and everything like that. And I was talking to to a, a vintage menswear, you know, a, an amateur historian guy that you probably know, Mark. And he did say that uh, only like really hardcore, like uh, university guys who were like were Esquire men wore it. And then when they got older, it kind of became, okay, then they became like the professors. They became the mm-hmm. writers, the artists. Okay. And it became a part of their sense. look. And then, of course, yeah. People are like, okay, I want to look like that guy now. So then it kind of goes in that realm where, like, yeah, by, by, the, by like, the 50s, or actually maybe, like, late 40s, like, college students started to wear more OCBDs. And then, of course, uh, 50s, 60s, boom. Like, that was, like, that was like mm-hmm. the look for, like, the heyday Ivy style, you know. And, again, if you look at those stuff, even, like, uh, you know, it, there's still so much variation with it. You know, you look at Berkeley Breeze Instagram, like there's a lot of variation in the, bu- the button down collars there. You see it in a bunch of different fabrics. We'll get into that yeah. more. But in, like, you know, it wasn't just Oxford. Like there was there was I- I've seen I've like touched like broadcloth and poplin like vintage. Oh, yeah. And there's shirts. like chambray OCBDs or denim, I, like pro- mo- mo- more commonly chambray OCBDs were pretty popular in the 30s. Uh, yeah. At least from like photographs and illustrations that we've seen. Yeah, dark and dark cloth, or, like or dark Oxford mm-hmm. ones, were pretty popular. It's like a '30s style movie. You know, so we've talked about like the light suit and like dark shirt, light tie kind of a thing that we've yeah. re- re- referenced. You know, there's like fl- I mean, some work shirts had that too. Like I have like a '50s like wool, like a worsted wool, um, like red work shirt with like you know the twin yeah. pe- the twin breast pocket and it's a button down collar and it rolls you know i i don't know if i could put a tie because it's still kind of it's kind of a weird shirt to wear with a tie it's like a vibrant i don't like wearing red. yeah and i don't like wearing wool shirts buttoned up all the way that's too yeah. scratchy yeah i know can't do that itchy yeah it's scratchy, <laughs> itchy and scratchy yeah um but yeah you definitely had this um you had like the like those like really fun like uh like psychedelic like like the batik shirts mm-hmm. and the and the and the paisley shirts because at like the 50s and 60s it became like it really became the everman shirt like if the spear point collar turned into the point collar the ocbd kind of stayed neutral you know it, it kind of became like mm-hmm. okay well i'm not wearing a business shirt i'm not wearing the point collar shirt i'm gonna be wearing this ocbd that looks good unbuttoned and with a tie you know because and it makes these- you know it's it's like it's a good it's a good casual shirt for that era because uh you know we like all our shirts online but a lot of shirts in the 40s and 50s were like you know had like inner lining or were starch and stuff like that so ocbds back then were till still typically like 100 percent unlined everywhere 
yeah exactly super soft they get very soft and comfortable when you when they break in yeah yeah um and uh yeah i mean because it's also like it's not a a sport collar it's not the loop collar shirt Mm -hmm. um and so you know, yeah, and, and and again, loop collar shirts like the Hawaiian or the camp collar shirts you guys know, and they, and they lay flat. And so, if you need something that that stands up, which is typically what we would consider to be dressier, you would wear an OCBD or a yeah. no collar shirt. And at some point, you know, obviously as time really went on, maybe it's because, and I wrote about this, maybe it's because of how standard it became. Like by like the seventies and eighties, it's like the old man or like the conservative shirt because then that's when like mm-hmm. trad became like a symbol of like old money kind of a thing. Because if trad was like the cool thing to wear in the sixties, it became a little old in the seventies and eighties as like you start getting more designer. Because it was like, and it was like a deliberate throwback. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, um, and it's I think that's what kind of you know even though a lot of guys menswear guys like the mid century look I think the seventies and eighties is what people kind of remember more like those those old like eighties catalogs you know like the kind of yeah. like vibrant or like seven seventies uh, ivy ivy I feel like has had a huge inspiration um, especially just like wider lapels like slightly longer collars wider ties stuff like that yeah 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 kind of a bolder foulard pattern a bolder mm-hmm. stripe with like you know you get like you like the awning stripe stuff that's also when I don't know if you I don't know when the fun shirt became a thing. It's got to be like late sixties or seventies, right? I think that that's not. Yeah, it's not I mean, too early. Like, yeah, fun fun shirts and things like um, like go to hell pants or critter pants. Those always like strike me as very like seventies. Like yeah, those are like I, the that, very it's, least like, early sixties. Yeah. yeah, it's exactly. It's, yeah, I was like, you know, I think, and that's what people typically kind of, at least today, kind of remember. And, and you do get like the beefier OCBD collar that you like nowadays mm-hmm. that's that's more of like a 70s 80s thing and, and of course you know wooden sleepers all these guys who collect and sell vintage brooks are typically from the 70s 80s and maybe early 90s that's like the sweet spot for for brooks yeah. also that's probably when they were still made in the united states um i think and the factory a, it, yeah the clothes in like 2000 something but i mean yeah that's heyday i am i imagine that if there were more 60s brooks ocbds out there we would see more of like people selling them I think it's just like 70s is, you know, there's still a lot of 70s dead stock Brooks shirts, but yeah. Um, I mean, that's when their business that, like that, super took off. Right? That was like the first time yeah. they started expanding, right? I mean, also mm-hmm. check out our stream on, on Brooks where all just gives us a very detailed history of, uh, of Brooks Brothers. Really, really fascinating stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and then it, it kind of, yeah, it became like the kind of old man stuff. Um, and in the, in, the, in the 2000s, right, like, you look at all, like, the, the cool dressers of the time, like Armani. Like, they're not wearing button-down collar shirts. They're wearing mm-hmm. point collars. You, you know, you look at Friends or Frasier. They're wearing, like, they're wearing point collar shirts. That's not, like, you know. I think I think the only person I can think of is, like, Jerry Seinfeld, like, the denim one or whatever, tucked in the jeans or something. But, like, that's, like, a casual look, right? Jerry Seinfeld, yeah. you know, with the, with the, the Nike sneakers. Um, but, but, yeah, and then... Uh, someone decided to slim it up make it un- make it make a short length and it became it came back you know shorter collar and everything no no yeah, roll at all prep prep revival uh mid late 2000s really really brought it back yeah that's right and then you also get with a hashtag menswear and just like just guys wearing it to like the mall and becoming like yeah the j crew secret wash shirt like those styles mm-hmm. that became kind of a thing um, but it's always been around for like menswear guys i think uh, i write that it kind of since the spearport collar is like gone and this is before the revival of the camp collar shirt in like 2015 the ocbd was always like the uh the classic shirt you know it was like the one um that you would wear to kind of as, as like a throwback like mm-hmm. yeah you don't want like the 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 um, the fused spread collar shirt you know you want something soft you want something a little bit of a throwback you want to do ivy style as a look because hashtag men's right, even though it's like a classic thing you still want to do some looks you still want to look italian yeah. you still want to do whatever you do you do where, where you wear the OCBD, you know, and then uh, now it's like fully back because people are really getting into like rugged ivy now. You see that a mm-hmm. lot, you know. You got all these guys on Instagram, you know, like like our friends at uh, like a cute style and Newton Street Vintage. These guys kind of and w- again wooden sleepers, kind of bringing back the kind of you yeah. know the, the the old OCBD, and you wear that with everything, right? You wear that with like fucking shorts and 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 jeans and chinos and and everything to it. Um, so yeah, it's 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 cool and 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 we like it because it's we like the shirt. Yeah. Um. So when did you? Well, yeah. When did you first get into it? Because I know that you always kind of liked Ivy before I did. Yeah. So I mean, my first like OC like I first got um started buying OCBDs like really early. 
mm. but they weren't like good ones. They were like from Target. But as <laughs> you said, um, this was like kind of, you know, I was into like 60s style, 50s, 60s style. And in, yeah. in like when I in high school. And so that was, you know, as we said, one of the few like 50s, 60s styles that you could buy at um, at like Target or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and so I started wearing those like, yeah, in like high school, I had like a white OCBD that I would wear all the time. Yeah. You did. Um, as, as I've, as I've said before, uh, my first order from Luxire shirts was a white French cuff, uh, spear point Oxford shirt. So I yeah, would wear yeah. that Oxford shirt a lot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I started getting more into like real Ivy style. I don't know, like senior year, maybe freshman year of high school or of college. I mean, mm-hmm. um, and I think, I think my first like OCBD purchases. Well, I probably just I, I got like another one on, I got another like a better white one on eBay or kind of like off white, like cream. Yeah. Um, off white, George. But that off white, yeah, it was an off white printed <laughs> uh, off white X Brooks Brothers collab. Um, but then I, I think my first like real good OCBDs where we found like randomly in a vintage store, like just in a basket in a vintage store in orange. Yeah. Like, um, uh, and they were problematic store. like, no. yeah. And, but anyway, they were, uh, he had like, this guy had a basket of like seventies and eighties Brooks shirts. None of them were dead stock, but you know, they were still from the seventies and eighties. So I got like a, I got a seventies Brooks makers blue Oxford and then a seventies Brooks gate which is like a poly blend, their cheaper line, but I don't mind. Um, red University Stripe, which I still wear both of those uh, pretty often. And yeah. since then, I mean, I don't have like a huge... Well, yeah, since then I've gotten like Kamakura. I have three shirts from Kamakura, which I love. I have two Drake's Oxfords. Uh, and then like like uh, one or two other vintage Brooks since then. My favorite is the... 70s 60s or 70s yellow brooks shirt or shirt that i got from doug that one's really versatile yeah we'll talk about that yeah um Mm -hmm. so yeah i mean yeah spencer was kind of the person i mean like we said earlier in the podcast the episode like you know um we were walking in in like a jake who goes oh yeah look at that look at that like i don't know if it was three roll two but the but the blue corduroy suit like you know spencer's Mm -hmm. always been like kind of kind of introduced me to ivy early on um but of course like most guys who had a tumblr and was like oh man not even hashtag men's i'm just talking like you know what i'm talking about like the fun ocbd that, that sounds like weird it's it's like like i can think of it's like a dark blue cotton poplin button down collar shirt untuck it with like a f- like like small flags like all over it you oh know? god yeah yeah and you wear that with like <laughs> yeah your jeans like cuffed with like a boot or something you know yeah uh, one of my favorite shirts that the, that the ladies really loved was an uh, was really oxford cloth shirt um i had no idea at the time i knew it was like a heavier fabric and it was like a tan shirt with like um with like wood like quote wooden buttons you know whatever and then it had a it had fish on it, <laughs> and it was really cool. I got it from like Urban Outfitters or something. Yeah, yeah, it's like that that kind of a look. Um, I can't deal with those summer shirts. We sold so many of them at J Crew. Like every I, summer, it'd be a short did. sleeve, short sleeve button down collar shirt with a bunch of like fish on it or whatever. I'm like, who? This is just worn by like fucking like twenty year olds <laughs> and then sixty year olds, and that's it. Yeah. It's uh, one of those guys who likes craft beer and uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we're haters. Um, but I think uh, obviously I think I got clued into this Ivy League look as we said in like some other earlier episodes or even on on the on the on the stream where I was like, okay, I want to be vintage. I want to be more contemporary. How do I do that? There's Ivy, right? We saw Dick Carroll doing it. You know, we saw a couple of guys. Um, you know, of course, I got getting some more inspiration not from Lawrence Fellows illustrations, but more. Um, like film photography of people, and that's usually a very '60s kind of a thing, documentarian style. Um, but I think I think the first one I have that I didn't write about, so the podcast is is a is a place to hear it, is like the um, the Uniqlo ones, and those were uh, pretty good. If you got like not like the untuck it ones, but like the dress version, they typically had a longer collar and they rolled. But they were non-iron, so then that's one of the one of the first times I figured out okay, uh, fused or non-iron stuff sucks. And I didn't realize it at the time or before that because 
when I had my spear points, even though I knew I liked the softer collar, Fuse still was fine because it evoked like those Sanfordized uh, spear point collar shirts that you would see. But I never thought about how the OCBD, like how the roll was so important to it. And it typically is better if you get it soft, you know? Yeah. Um, and so then after I don't, that, I don't really, yeah, I don't really, I just don't get the, the appeal of a, of an OCBD or any kind of button down collar shirt with like inner lining or a stiff collar. Yeah. Um, it's weird. It's, yeah. Don't get it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was pretty early for me. Like immediately after that, after that Uniqlo one, I never bought like a non iron shirt like ever again. Mm -hmm. This is like 2014, early 2015. Um, and then I started to, like with Spencer, we would look and, you know, look through the racks because obviously it's hard to find 30 shirts and we were pretty used to, to at this point, buying it from our like natty shirts or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the thing you could find were OCBDs, and it's kind of fun to find, okay, oh, this is a good one. Oh, shit, it's not iron or oh, shit, it's it's poly blend or whatever, and we don't like that. Yeah. Um, or typically, you know, like the early ones from like Brooks, after like 60 years of wear or 50 years, it's like softer compared to like an LL Bean poly blend from like the 90s. It yeah. doesn't feel as great. Um, I, I also, you you did try to get um, Natty to make you some 1930s that's, yes. style ocbds yeah. like you like you talk to mark chevalier who we mentioned before is like in you know amateur like historian he's, yeah. He's, yeah he's like an amateur menswear historian not saying amateur is and he does he's very knowledgeable yeah he's, he it's not his full-time job yeah it's that's not it yeah but he's um but yeah you talk to him and got like okay this is what a 30s brooks shirt like this is how far away the buttons were this is like you know you got all the details and how yeah, did they turn the up well, okay. So the first thing is, I don't even know if they listen to me because, like, I I don't have I've never tried their button down collar beforehand. I don't know if they you know there's nothing to compare it to. And, and this website, as we talked to Natty Shirts, is a really shitty website. It doesn't really show you like the options, um, because it's like a like a graphic or something. But it mm -hmm. looked pretty good. I think I included some pictures in there. It it rolls pretty well. It just it doesn't. I mean, it's one of those things, and we'll talk about it in a second. But like my preferences for a collar are different. Like I think again, though that early one, it's fatter. There's not like a spear point ish curve to it that you see in some mm -hmm. of them that we've, that I've included. Um, but based on that, it was good. Um, really beefy. The fabric, I think I got some really heavy Oxford. I just didn't wear it enough for it to break in. And uh, the collar shrank like crazy. Oh, uh, maybe no. because it's maybe, yeah, maybe it's like, it wasn't, it was, it wasn't a pre shrunk fabric and I asked for it unlined, obviously. So it shrinks up. Uh, because the mm -hmm. few, cause fusing is that's kind of why okay that's the answer fusing sometimes can prevent it from from shrinking i think i think that's the case um i say that because i just know that these collars shrink in the neck <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah uh, that's that's the basis of that hypothesis um but yeah i i, I think i think jay has it because jay has a smaller neck size than mine or or maybe i just i just donated them to like goodwill or something um but yeah they were my first first ones there and i haven't tried to recreate it ever since because as i wrote in the article if i'm gonna spend money i'm gonna get a fucking spear point collar because that's something you can't mm -hmm. get anywhere else that's something i get at ascot chang now and they've gotten it right and um ocbds because they're like the everyman thing i feel like it's kind of cool to like thrift them or find it on ebay um for like you know between 30 to 60 dollars depending on the like condition of it or whatever and you know, and we've we kind of got into this, I, th I think, in the custom menswear episode. But uh, OCBDs, you kind of want to fit like wide and roomy, and honestly, then there's not really much point in getting them made to measure, <laughs> unless you're just like have a really fat neck and really short arms. Yeah, I mean, it's also um, like you gotta really want like that particular collar, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll get into that in a second. But but yeah, I have um, I have Kamakura. I had, I tried two of them. I had the Kamakura button down collar, which wasn't a non-iron but it was a fused collar mj has yeah. that now uh then i got when i was in japan i got the sport version not the ivy not the vintage ivy one because those are like the ready to wear alpha sized untuck it style uh shirts that have a smaller collar and they don't really roll like they don't work with a tie and i'll get into that in a second um but then i got like the sport version which is probably like their best one um and mm -hmm. i love it it's my main it's my only ocbd with a university stripe or or actually it's my only shirt in general that has a university stripe it's not my only blue stripe but it's my only university stripe shirt and i really like that but the rest of mine are all like vintage like brooks makers stuff um early 2000s brooks are like still still i don't know if they're made in america i think some are made in like malaysia but they are definitely the all cotton um 
not non-iron. And they're not all yeah. Oxford. Some of them are Poplin. Some of them are end-on-end. End. Uh, I don't mind it. I think that's one reason why we called it at the beginning of the episode. Like, it doesn't have to be Oxford cloth because sometimes you just find it. Sometimes you buy stuff just because the, the pattern is cool. Like, like we're not going to say, oh, the Madras button-down collar. It's, it's not Oxford. Like, no, that doesn't matter. You want the Madras shirt too, right? You know? Yeah, you want a plaid Oxford, even yeah. though it's not Oxford. Yeah, I don't even know if they make plaid Oxford do they? I mean, maybe they do, but they probably do. I'm sure someone does. But yeah. but Mad- uh, Madras is probably like the most common one that you would think of for like a plaid, uh, or or a poplin, yeah. you know. Um, so yeah, I have I have those ones, um, and yeah, I haven't really bought any like big maker. I know that there's a lot of other ones out there, like Hundred Hands is a bespoke one. Mm-hmm. Ascot Chang makes a couple variations for Brycelands that you get from them, or from Ascot Chang, uh, from from the Armory. Um, and now, I mean, there's all the like the like really ivy places the revival like, uh, ones like yeah jakes. J- jakes or even like the old school ones like uh, mercer and sons o'connell's yeah, yeah. whatever yeah 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 you know and then i think j press is like reviving their or maybe they've never maybe mm-hmm. i'm saying reviving but maybe they've never been gone but like the button flap uh yeah. in oxfords and so they're like they're always around so i never feel the need to make it you know and uh again i'll get into it after this um but i'm very not i'm picky about it but because i don't want to spend the money on it and it's one of those <laughs> things where it involves a lot more about my style um, yeah but we'll get into it so how do you how do you wear your oxford cloth and your button-down collars how do, how do you do it i mean i you, you don't like wearing yours without ties and i don't well i don't wear uh, ties much anymore period but i have always worn mine uh just as shirts um and we've talked about before they are kind of they always kind of have like academic vibes um, you know, I'm a journalism student. Most journalists that I've worked with, like the OCBD is kind of like a uniform, like OCBD yeah. and slacks. Um, so I kind of like, I kind of like doing that, but you know, the cooler version or the like mid-century version. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, you know, I just, I wear them how I wear like any other shirt. Um, and yeah, I, I tip, I tip. Yeah, that's, that's how I do it when I want something to be a little bit less rugged. I will opt uh, for an OCBD instead well, of like a chambray shirt. Okay, yeah, I was gonna say what like what are the alternatives for your style? You know, like 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 when you're when you're making mm-hmm. it, like do you, what do you think of? Like you're gonna make this dressier, but you don't really have to, or maybe not dressier. I don't know, but like you don't have to. Uh, like the idea of wearing a spear point collar instead doesn't cross your mind as much anymore. I mean, it does because it's like I still, you know, I have all my spear points that I like quote unquote like rediscovered, like started wearing again. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are like, they are, uh, just different vibes. Like the spear point always seems more old school. Um, and you know, that's because it is, it's a specifically 1930s style. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, yeah, I, I could, I could wear them interchangeably. It's sometimes just a case of like, I try one on and I'm like, oh, this looks good. Yeah. Well, see, okay. So the way I, I, I know you wear it with like, yeah, you do it with like slacks, you do it with trousers, you know, I think mm-hmm. most men's wear events lately, you have been wearing that more than the spear point collar, because um, yeah. you have like the you have the Drake's ones, you right? You have Drake's. Yeah, I have I have the I have a chambray shirt from Drake's, which is great, and then I have a uh, kind of like wine Oxford, which I really like. I really like that color. Unfortunately, I haven't worn it um, enough, so it's not like all broken and then soft. But mm-hmm. I think it's a really I think it's a really cool color and one that you don't see as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the kind of like dusty wine red. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I put a picture. It's you wearing it with like a navy blazer and like a paisley tie. Mm-hmm. I think that's really really cool. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't own any Drake's ones. I think uh, it's just it's just expensive. I don't I don't need yeah. one. I mean, and Spencer got them on sale. Um, that's kind of how. And, and, and the reason why, so I I get mine a lot of mine are Brooks is because occasionally I just look up Brooks fifteen point five cotton and then I just like see what's on there. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of like the OCBDs are like the, the Madison fits or like the slim fits, and the ones that aren't are usually older and they're poplin, maybe because people mm. buy up the uh, Oxford, the classic Oxford ones all the time, and so I, um, yeah, I just I a couple of my stuff is are um, poplin, um, but the way I wear it, uh, I do wear it interchangeably with Fairpoint collars, but it the, the difference, like Spencer said, is because I wear it with a tie. And so it's a little bit of like, mm-hmm. okay, how do I want to frame my tie today? Is it going to be with a collar bar, you know, the spear point collar, or is it going to be with the OCBD? Because they both, you know, to me, um, and I say this in the article, the reason why I don't like say Oxford cloth button down is because it's just, 
like and I don't think about like the classic stuff. Like, oh, does it have like the gussets or whatever? No, it, it's all the collar. That's what you see, and that's what you mm-hmm. see frames of tie and, and what makes it Ivy like a spear point collar to a regular person. A regular magic guy won't trigger as Ivy, even though it could be thirties Ivy. Uh, what makes it Ivy just off the bat? If you just look at a guy's torso, it's the fucking button down collar with exactly. the tie. Um, and so that's kind of my basis for it. I think about, okay, how do I want to wear this? You know, usually, obviously, I like to wear my OCBDs or button-down collars with, like, rep ties um, or geometrics, but not as crazy as, like, the 30s because I feel like it's a little bit too anachronistic or kind of weird um, for doing that. Um, but, yeah, most of my stuff is is worn with tailoring. Uh, I just, I, when I wear it just by itself, I feel like I am like a Michael Bluth, like, uh, like really like, you know, yeah. un- unbuttoned, you know, shirt, you know, maybe a visible undershirt kind of peeking out with like khakis. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what that is. I don't like that. You know, even like, even if I like, oh yeah, I'm going to do it with like jeans and loafers. It still feels too dad to me. Maybe it's because I'm like shorter and my shirts are really like, like, you know, for 15 and a half inch neck, like the shirt's like 44 inches. It's, it's huge, mm-hmm. you know? And that look doesn't look as good. I do love the, um, you know, maybe uh, I, I, I wrote a thing later on in the in the notes or our outline. It's like iconic OCBDs. And it's like um, the North by Northwest finale outfit where it's like a really baggy yeah. OCBD with like really high waisted trousers. I love that it's look. supposed to contrast how like slick he looks in the beginning with his very like Madison Avenue. Yeah. Gray and like suit. this like thing that the, like the CIA guy just gives him. He's like, here, we got some clothes for you. Yeah. I do like that. But it's one of those things where like, yeah, I, I start putting on this like my, my, you know, side tab, um, pleated trousers, OCBD. And I'm like, you know what? I want to wear a sport coat. I want to wear a tie with this. You know, and it just, it just, it doesn't, it doesn't start out that way. I mean, there are times I hung out with Spencer where I take off my sport coat and a tie and I do that look, but it's not the look I had intentionally went for, you know? Yeah. It's um, just, it's circumstantial. Exactly. Which is true spread to or true slouch, if you want to call it that. Um, and there was a, there was a time when I, I did work with Milsurp a lot. Like, you know, when I first got my, my, uh, my, um, jungle jacket i did do like oh yeah knit wear jeans ocbd and then like the jungle jacket with like a bucket hat i don't do that as much mm-hmm. now because i like as again like i said quarantine has made me like really want to get dressed up again um but yeah i did do that kind of like you know ivy dad rugged ivy look it's just not something i that really lasted in my uh personal style uh i do love wearing it with shorts so that is one of the few times i do yeah. wear it uh without That's a tie a yeah, like the kind of, and untucked with like short shorts with like socks and, and our, our our uh, Instagram, uh, well Instagram uh, Oxford cloth button down the the person not the shirt. Yeah, he does this look a lot and it's really great. Yeah, he also does uses like uh, OCBDs like over shirts over other OCBDs mm-hmm. and it's very prep uh, Steve Bannon kind of a stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, you see, you know, uh, I think one reason why maybe I'm like slowly getting back into it and why, why Spencer probably has a lot of inspiration is because a lot of our friends and mutuals on there, you know, they, they, they do think of it as an everyday shirt. They wear it with, with like cut off fatigue shorts, you know, they wear it with, mm. you know, you see like Dick Carroll wearing it with like a three piece CAD suit, a Cade suit. Uh, you see like Mark Cho wearing it with like a bespoke Livorano suit, you know, there's a lot of yeah. this stuff that they kind of play into it and how it really is. I mean, even, even in our discord guys wear it a variety of different ways like shane wears his untucked with shorts really cool you know um it really is like it's the menswear i mean it's not just a menswear version like you know yeah mall guys wear it and menswear guys wear it with everything guys love wearing the oxford shirt it's a winning shirt i mean you know what it's like what what else could you want from a shirt it's like comfortable and it has a pocket (laughs) that's basically all you need yeah i mean not not the original ones (laughs) Not the original ones, but they do now. I like, yeah, I. it's funny. What like when I was more of a stickler and I, I wanted to do a 30s style OCBD, I'm like, I'm going to get it pullover. I'm not going to get a pocket. Uh, now yeah, I'm like, no, shirt. give me the pocket. I might still do it pullover. I kind of like, I like baggy pullover shirts. I think they're I, cool. But I don't know. I definitely I think, want a pocket. I think I have like a prominent, like, like chesty kind of a thing because I work out so much. Um, but yeah. I think popovers, I just need like, it's just too restrictive. Like, you know, I mean, it's fine. I mm. have, I have 30s pullover work shirts that I have that I wear, but. I don't know. I just, I like the being able to like unbutton it and kind of have it be like loose around my chest yeah. and everything. Um, 
but yeah, you know, I think what's what's cool about about having everyone be into it is that it, it's made a couple of variations, like mentioned, like Mercer and Sons or or Drakes or whatever. Um, but when you really look at it, like the real test is like what kind of cotton they use for it, because mm-hmm. I think now with like technology, you can have a really fine Oxford Oxford cotton. And those like contribute to kind of the more satiny, shiny, more elegant ones that you see, like Anglo Italian style, yeah. or or like the armory ones that that they wear. Contrast that with like you know the vintage Brooks Brothers that you can see the visual heft, the wrinkles in like a, a you know in a uh, in a more vintage style one, like like Jake's or whatever. You know, there's a lot that goes into it, and that's kind of uh, at this point because. Maybe the spread collar is going out of fashion or the point collar, you know, like where people are dressing up less. They still want to wear a tie, but Oxford, like we said, allows you yeah. to look look good. Uh, it looks look look uh, quote formal without being formal. Um, and so I mean, you know, it makes sense as like I, I, I don't want to say it's been gaining popularity right now because that seems uh, silly. It's been popular for so long. Yeah. But, you know, it is it is a good shirt for like, you know, 2021, because as we kind of talked about in the bonus episode or when looking at some of the the lookbooks the the direction that a lot of places seem to be going now is like okay it's still like menswear but it's comfortable enough that you could wear it at home by yourself and it's not weird yeah and the ocbd is a very very good shirt for that yeah exactly and so you know when it comes to that it's like which one do you want the the cloth again play plays a big deal into it um but the collar let's talk about that because yeah um at the most important part the most important part is what makes it the fucking button down collar shirt you know Mm -hmm. because like i I said this before when you take off the buttons is in in certain vintage ones or like even like drake's ones they look like spear points they look like point collars or like like a very subtle curved point collar um just with buttons you know and and i remember it the first time i think bruce boyer wrote about it i don't know where it was this is like 2014 2013 um it was like oh drake starts doing the buttonless button down collar shirt and that was before they started like and you could see it i don't think it was like in any marketing because i saw it when i went to london in like 2018 or 2017 um mm-hmm. but then it became like oh the like the the long point collar and now i think there's yeah. a little too much spread in it that's a little bit different now than before but um but yeah 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 so you have to look at it you know the collar is super important um it's one of those things that i found like yeah you got to see it with a tie. You got to see it on a person. You got to see it unbuttoned. You got to see it on the packaging because you can't really tell, right? You can't, you gotta, you gotta like put it on, you know, to kind of figure it out because like when you have it unbuttoned and opened, they all kind of look the same. (laughs) They all kind of like, you know, it's, they're all going to roll probably because if it's, if it's not like the J crew secret wash shirt with like an inch and a half collar, like if if it's anything at like three inches to four inches, it's going to roll because that's still a lot of collar, you know, but it's when you button it, that's when you see, okay, how far are the buttons uh, across? You know, if there are mm-hmm. a lot of menswear guys today or maybe brands have it really spread out and it makes like this kind of really exaggerated, really wide bell shape or like, yeah. S, like a very think, angled S kind of curve. I mean, they're like, yeah, trying to get that like very distinct shape. But then I also think it's like, okay, well we want to, um, and we've talked about why we like this with spear points. We want to like kind of meet like the edges of the jacket, so they spur- they put the they put the buttons right where the edges of the jacket should be, or the edges of the lapel. It's fucking weird because I, I, that makes the collar spread out, but it, like with spear points, it goes it's, inward. Yeah, and yeah, it, the, yeah. yeah exactly. Because the thing is, spear points they're just like longer, and so they don't have to be as spread out as. Far. Yeah, they they'll meet the lapel lower on the thing, right? As opposed uh-huh. to the OCBD. Yeah, that's a great point. And I think Henrik uh, H. Wilberg put this in our Discord, where like, uh, and I I was kind of coming to it as a conclusion, but yeah, as guys start buying, you know, or, or getting from like, oh yeah, spread collar shirts. Oh no, I don't want to do spread because it's too fancy. You just take that idea of the spread collar <laughs> shirt and you do it OCBD style. Because man, I tell you, the Anglo Italian shirt is just so spread. It is it is almost comical about how wide it is. And I do think it it depends. I mean, it 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 really shows in the in the tie choice that you have. Because again, modern ties, even if they're not 70s wide, the knot that they have because of the inner lining um, is going to be a lot wider than any vintage yeah. tie that Spencer and I have. And I guess it's true. I mean, I'm sure the, the makers know that too, which is why there's a little bit, you know, 
the spread There's is there. More tie to... space. It lets the tie fill it out a little bit more. Yeah. Or it doesn't but, constrict the tie. But and that's uh, that's always what bugged me really quick. That's what bugged me so much about like when I would see mannequins with ties at J Crew, is because those ties are so fucking tiny and all our t- or sorry those collars are so tiny and all our ties are so so thick. Like and the people who design the mannequin would always give them like half Windsors or whatever. Yeah. It just was like fucking eating up that collar. I'm like, no one can think this looks good. Like, yeah. no one thinks well, this looks what good. What I right? don't like is when like the tie knot gets too close to like the button part, like the lengthwise. Yeah. I, that's it's very subtle. And again, it d- depends on how much you know. Because if you if you tie your tie closer to the shorter shorter blade, of course, knot's gonna be smaller because that's that's the less thick part of the tie, and then you just tuck in the rest. But not again. Not every menswear guy does that. So the result mm-hmm. is the tie starts to get too like the knot area the, where the triangle meets the body of the tie it starts to get too close to the button and that just looks off to me like when you look at like yeah. the classic images like there is still like the like the knotting point is still a ways above the like the, the collar points and that is something so important to me and why i if i go like if i go to you know drakes or whatever i have to bring like a vintage tie or my made to order tie with me because i need to s- make sure because i know spencer does it and i think it's fine but uh, like on me i need to see it. and i don't have i have i have uh unfortunately the bloke always sold out of my size in 15 and a half mm. so i could never see to make sure that the tie knot you know was at the right area um and that's why again looking anglo italian of course yeah uh, they needed to be spread out and wide, but then it's because the tie knots are just that much bigger. Um, and you do see like guys like like Dick Carroll wearing vintage Brooks that illustrate uh, the for me what the right amount of like collar yeah. space and length, everything that kind of goes all together. Because I think at the end of the day, I actually don't want like something super spread. I don't need it to be super um, super bell shaped either. I want like a very subtle curve. And even now, some of my OCBDs don't curve that much, or they don't roll that much. It also changes, like, based on the tie I'm wearing or maybe how I, when I button it down, how, like, my fingers roll on it. You know, I think there's... Yeah, I was going to say, you can just, like, some collars, you can just press on them and they, like, adopt a completely different shape. Yeah, exactly. So there's, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a fun shirt. Like, if you think of it that way, right? Like, there's a lot of, like, customizability with it. Um, And so, yeah. And speaking of fun shirts, do we want to start getting into the different patterns? And cloth, yeah. Let's. uh, Well, we did talk about the cloth already, Um, but I mean, like we said uh, really quickly, um, because the collar is what's so iconic, they just put this shirt on. They put the collar on everything, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. That's why it works for like. I mean, the Drakes made the chambray one so popular, Um, but you see it like you know wool shirts. I mean, Anglo Italian has like flannel shirts. You know, you see that on polo shirts. I didn't. I didn't really talk about mm-hmm. that in the essay because I don't really. Yeah, like, like Spear and McKay. Spear and McKay makes a, a a polo shirt with a button down collar that has a really nice roll. Um, I don't know if they still make it because I remember first seeing it in like 2017 or 2018. Right. And it it was only like forty dollars. Maybe I should have picked one up, but um, I think it's at the time spread. I was really impressed. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I know that. Um, I mean, that's one that you're not going to be wearing it? with a tie. Well, you've lost me. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah okay. one thing I have for me, it's got, to, it's got, to, it's not that I don't wear mine without ties. It's more that like I have to have the option of doing both because, like I said, it's mm. incidental when I just. Take you would it wear off, you would know? you wear a tie with the polo shirt, the button down polo shirt? Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. I mean, I, well, there you I, go. I, I, this is off topic, but I did. There was one time where, we, um, for one of my church stuff, I had to wear like the camp counselor polo and i was like in super in the hashtag bench at the time I'm like you know what i'm gonna wear this with a, with, a, with a suit and so uh everyone is there wearing like this pk with like the branded like camp or whatever like like on the chest and there's me wearing it like yeah. underneath a suit with like a like some fucking <laughs> shitty ass tie because i, I oh, want to be God. cool and contrarian um but uh, but yeah there's a lot of different fa- fabrics on it i think again it just depends on what you like because that's when pattern comes into it like like we said earlier i think mattress or, or plaid button down collar shirts are really cool and you typically see them uh in mattress uh you also mm-hmm. see them in poplin which is what i have i have like a really cool like dark blue check one that i've worn a couple times i have like i i just got a couple weeks ago a like red like red and yellow plaid one that i really like yeah. um and that's in poplin um Oh wait, of, of of course. I don't I've I have three Drake shirts. I have the chambray one, I have the ox red wine, the dusty wine Oxford, and then I do have one of their Madras, which is like a blue and yellow. That's a good one. Um, yeah. Madras, yeah. I kind of I really like their like 
more like bright ones, like the yellow or orange bases that they make. Yeah. Um, Spear McKay, or they make some. They make some good ones. I might pick up one of their mattresses uh, this year, this summer. Gift yeah, of the Mad Mad Dry. <laughs> Gift of the Mad Dry. <laughs> Gift of the Mad Dry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what? Yeah, one thing I I've noticed about um, OCBDs is that I, I all of mine have different patterns in my spear points. So that's what also kind of applies to how I wear it. Because again, like I said, my university stripes are often in OCBD. I have it in blue. I have it in red. I used to have like a purple one. Um, and then like I have like in those checks. I have it like and a lot of like my dark base. I have a really great. 60s green ocbd that i got in new york really great i do wear that one without Mm -hmm. a tie because it's kind of a fun like artist you know baggy shirt you know it's really wrinkly um but uh but yeah i I think there's something about the button down collar that kind of equalizes it which is why it's fun to see it in like the paisleys you see it in the batiks you see it like the uh ren spooner does it like the reverse aloha print where like the the faded parts on the outside and not you know you know um, you also see it in the fun stripes, uh, like where, whether it's like, you know, the poplin, um, you know, bangle mm-hmm. stripes that are like different pieces on the body. You see it in like fun ginghams, fun solids. Fun, yeah. You yeah, see yeah. that, you know, I, yeah, I have the striped one and I really like the striped one. Um, I don't think I would get a solid one just because I don't really like the colors that you typically see on the solid ones. I'm not as much into the pastels. Yeah. But the one that I have is like the really like vibrant, like uh, uh, Bengal stripes, which I like. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one I think like wooden sleepers finds a couple of every once in a while and yeah. it sells out. Um, but yeah, I mean, solids are also really good here. I actually, I, I prefer a solid in an OCBD than I would in like a spear point collar other than like mm-hmm. white or blue, but like, yeah, you know, I think especially if you get into really nice Oxford, because yeah. I mean, yeah, that the texture is going to speak for itself. Yeah. I, I think obviously, like we said, like, um, I have no issues with Poplin or Madras, but I think obviously Oxford is like the ultimate shirt. You know, I mean, I have it, like I wrote in the article, I have it in my, in my spear point collars because I just love the fabric so much because of how it breaks in. And I Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone's ever going to be like, oh, you're wearing the casual fabric and not broadcloth. You should go home and change, you know? Um, But I think that that aspect of like the wrinkliness, the heft that you get, the, the, the age that it has lends itself to be used like you know if you want to get like in a dark blue which i think you do you have it in a dark blue from comic yeah right? i have i have a comic one in navy with white buttons which is another great casual shirt yeah that's really cool i mean that's why it's good that's like chambray's it looks good in yeah. pink uh and like again like so like my dark green ocbd and of course the really classic one the yellow or ecru ones um mm-hmm. i think those are are really good good for like 70s vibes um they kind yeah. of equalize out a suit a little bit they're not as intense as white but they're not like soft like blue they're just a yellow you know it's a very it's a very friendly shirt friendly i'm a friendly shirt yeah, camp camp friendly pines camp yeah. camp oh, these pines are camp friendly <laughs> these pines are camp friendly <laughs> yeah um but yeah i mean like we said if we think about the brands we get it right i don't have a lot of experience with it i again i just buy vintage brooks or i try and find makers i think makers i think is like the 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 good the good point where it's really nice uh on that note i do have an end on end one that i think was my first ever button down collar blue stripe um that wasn't the natty shirt i actually didn't get one from natty shirts but like yeah button down collar blue stripe Mm -hmm. but it's like a dobby stripe it's like like one of like really thick like white like multi-stripe kind of a things i love that as like a spring summer shirt i've worn that a lot with like knit ties because it's a little too wild to wear with like um with like uh geometrics and everything but i think that's kind of a a fun one um end on end i think Mm -hmm. is like so if you don't want to do poplin and you think oxford's a little too casual i think end on end is pretty good um and then of course it still gets you that kind of yeah 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 like end on end end on end and chambray still kind of give you like an interesting texture something that's not so flat but obviously it's not going to be you know, as textured or as as quote unquote scratchy as an Oxford. Yeah, I think I think the formality for me for me it goes and we'll get into this now, but like like um like Poplin number one, then you go down to end on end, then you do mm-hmm. Oxford, then you do Chambray. I think that's kind of like yeah. and that's kind of like that, that spectrum of, of where you want to end up at um in terms of in terms of formality. Because again, I uh, as we talk about this, I I, I I have a hard time believing that 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 old idea of oh yeah the OCBD is is a casual shirt you can't wear that with a tie and with a suit is so outdated especially when it's inaccurate mm-hmm. when you see like Brooks uh, you see Brooks um, 
articles and 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 um not articles uh uh advertisements and illustrations and and whatever of guys wearing even three piece suits with OCBDs and ties. Yeah. It's like a, it must be like a modern convention or something that these old guys do. Well, it's that- funny cuz like I always heard that like at vintage events like vintage guys would say it's like, "Oh, I hate OCBDs. I hate, you know, OCBDs with ties or whatever." Probably cuz they associate it with 60s, which I don't know if that's still the case. I feel like a, a lot of vintage people may are maybe embracing the 60s by now. But back then, they all hated anything like post like 1955. Yeah, and it's also because I think maybe they thought that the collars are too small now. But I mean, like we said, mm-hmm. the, what's his name, the Fred Astaire would wear it, you know. Yeah. Um. But honestly, I mean, this shirt's really great. I, I, I think we've included a lot of inspiration there. But what I think is really classic is like the plain suit, a, a white OCBD, and like the black knit tie or something. I think that that's mm-hmm. so cool. Uh, or even even with a navy jacket and gray flannels as a version of that, that's really great. I have done it a couple of times. You know, I, I don't really repeat outfits, but that's one that I kind of do air on every once in a while. Um, but yeah, that really does kind of go with everything. You know, I mean, obviously none of you guys have to get the spear point collar shirt, uh, but what you guys can do is get the OCBD yeah. the button down collar. And the OCBD is like so much easier to get because the spear point. You know, the, to get a true spear point that we've talked about that we really like, you either have to get vintage or you have to get, uh, like, made to measure or custom made because, like, no one no. is really just making that style. Yeah. Uh, the OCBD, as we've said, there's, like, so many variations. Um, and we've, you know, we've said what we like, but um, I think I think we both like variety in menswear i think even if it's not what we would personally wear if you do like the anglo-italian super spread oxford then yeah go ahead that's that's i'm glad that there are people making different styles see what i don't like is one style of shirt you can't wear the uh, you can't wear the uh the anglo-italian one with a bow tie spread collar shirts with bow ties (laughs) look shitty as hell and i know that that this means nothing to anybody but i still wear bow ties like like once a month and i think they're fun and i it doesn't work i mean maybe that's why they don't want you to wear with a bow tie um Mm. Uh, i will say though not a fan of a short uh, button down collars if i could if i if if i had to get rid of one style of button down collar the really short mall brand one might be it <laughs> yeah i mean hey even the 30s ones dude get get the fuck out of here i i i yeah. was actually i was at western gifts um but by our friend garrett miller really great vintage store if you guys are in la go check it out um but he had a safari style shirt from like the 30s or 40s popover style with epaulets hmm. button short button down collar Ooh, the weird, that's interesting. The weird thing, though, is that obviously the previous owner had replaced the buttons. The buttons were fucking huge. It was like it was like probably like a seventies yeah. button or something. But it's so disgusting. I mean, it's it's funny. Like you know, we 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 obviously talk a lot about the spear point, how that was popular in the thirties. But there was also a big trend for like short collars in the thirties. Like yeah, I, you see that a lot. Like very short, early very to mid thirties collars. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, you see that in the, in the in the images and everything. Um. But uh, really quick before we close out here, um, let's talk about that pocket. Let's talk about the other. Details oh, absolutely. Out there. So yeah. obviously, uh, the 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 pocket is not the original because, as we said, there are pictures of people wearing it without pockets. You know, and and uh, people didn't really use breast pockets as much because it was a work fabric that was a work detail. Well, um, then then also like in the early twentieth century, most people, a lot of people, were still wearing uh, vests. So, you know, you would have your vest pocket or your coat pocket or something. You didn't necessarily need a shirt pocket. Yeah, exactly. Um, but but the thing, the effect on Ivy that I had for me is like, man, I love not just my breast pocket, but when it's a button flap pleated pocket, I think that is mm. so good. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's really cool. Flap um, uh, button pockets on OCBDs I think are really cool. It's, again, one of those things that I'm always con- kind of conflicted with because I like flat pockets, but I also like having a pocket open where I can just stick stuff in there. You can just have uh, it. I don't, you just... I, the flap gets in the way sometimes, okay. you know, even right. if it's tucked in. But, um, yeah, it's one of those things where I think if I were if I were spending, like, real money on a shirt or, you know, if I were getting it made, that's tough. Actually, if I were getting a made, I'd probably do a flat pocket <laughs> just because it's harder to get. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah, the J Press ones are there, but as you saw in some yeah. of my images, uh, the J Press collar kind of sucks. I don't know if it's just the way the guy tied his tie; it just looks so shitty. You know. Mm. Sorry, sorry, J- Jacob. Press. 
Sorry, Richard Press. Richard, that's his name. There you go. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, no. I mean, the, I like the pocket. I think it's kind of a cool. I I don't. I use it a little bit. You know, I put like a my phone in there a couple times. I used to. I used to bring pen. Well, when I would go out more, I would bring a pen and pad with me, um, in case I like had to jot something down, um, or you know, take some pictures and try to write down something about it. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I like, I like that detail. Um, I know Drake's has that, which is cool for them on certain shirts. Um, I, my spirit point collars, I know this is not a OCBD, but I've translated that onto my spirit point collars cause I like that detail. Um, there's also that detail of the, of the back collar button, which is weird. Oh yeah. Um, I don't, <laughs> I, I remember when we went to New York and we're talking to the Drake's guys, like they were all mentioned. It's like, yeah, I cut those off. Like I hate them. Um, <laughs> Which, like, if you're going to be wearing them with a tie a lot, then, yeah, like, it makes sense. They are kind of annoying. So you you either, um, you could either cut it off or just leave it unbuttoned if you don't want to bother it. Um, yeah. I wear mine without ties enough that it doesn't really bother me as much. Uh, I, I guess sometimes if I'm wearing it with a tie, I'll just, like, yeah, just not bother with it. Just not bother with the back button. I do yeah. like the locker loop, however. I don't know why. I never actually like use it for anything. I just think it looks cool. I like the That's locker right. loop. That's right. Yeah, the locker loop on the back of the uh, back to neck, right, right at the top of mm-hmm. the box plate in the back, which is what kind of gives it. Box that plate big. is another nice detail. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I haven't put that on my bespoke shirts, but I I like it on an OCBD. Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, the uh, the locker loop is an interesting detail. I don't know if I actually need it, but the back collar button. I wear ties all the time. I can't stand that shit, dude. I, I, I never use it. Like I just always yeah. have it I always have it undone. Um and I oh yeah, I do have some sixties, um sixties, seventies O C B Ds, vintage ones full Oxford that are not Brooks Brothers that I love. I think I finished off my essay with pictures of the best one, which is this like white and like very faint red multi stripe and it's but it's it those stripes are spaced out enough so it doesn't look like a red shirt. I love mm-hmm. that shirt so much. I wore I wear it all the time. It is so soft. It is I I don't want it to die. Um, and speaking of that, I think Oxford cloth shirts are cool with some wear, not just with wrinkles, but when you do repairs yeah. on it, when you get the collar. I need to I need to repair my red one and my yellow one because both of those collars they are frayed, and you know that's cool. But I also don't want to just like lose fucking all the fabric on the collars. Yeah. So I haven't I haven't been wearing those as much. Um, because I need, I need to, I need to go to a tailor or something. Yeah. Uh, and to flip like, the collar. Get those. Well, yeah, either flip the collar or get them patched up, but I'd want to find someone who can make it look cool. Well, that's one thing about the OCBD, right? Like, because it's the same on both ends, you don't have like the, uh, the collar stay, um, mm-hmm. uh, s- slit, I guess. Gash. <laughs> um, <laughs> Gash. but, uh, but yeah, you do are able to kind of flip it and save it for a little bit longer, um, you know, mm. uh, of course you can patch it. I mean, I've had that, that red stripe that I talked, that I just talked about. I got the, um, the elbows blew out, um, and I got it replaced with blue ox, but I, I tried to find chambray at work, but of course, um, well, my previous job, we, we cut out fabric when things are sold out and I just, I picked some blue Oxford cloth and I put that on there, which is really cool. And it makes the shirt even cooler because it's like my, mm. I'm making this last, you know, it's like a, yeah. it's like a car that you keep adding stuff to because you don't want it to go. Yeah, men, men didn't make do or make do and mend whatever the, the old yeah. adage is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, I just love, I love this shirt. Obviously, I don't love it as much as my Spirit Point collar. Um, I, 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 I don't know if the Spirit Point collar was available in the way I wanted it. I don't know if it would be fifty-fifty. You know, it's just one of those things where when you wear it, it not only doesn't go with everything, but it just, be, it looks old school. And I think a lot of other guys like that too. Like I, you know, as we talk about like the rise of archival fashion, and we're gonna have a podcast episode on the future of menswear. I know that's coming out. We unfortunately. Mm-hmm lost the audio i did appeal it to twitch probably never gonna hear anything back about it um but yeah i think that you know the rise the popularity of it you know obviously you're not gonna see it like j crew in the beefy way but like you know when you see it like rowing blazers or or noah or whatever i think that the love that this shirt has is kind of kind of uh proof that the classics really don't go anywhere and mm-hmm. um there's just a, that appeal where looking like mid-century that you can kind of pass off you can wear it with anything you can wear it with like fucking dickies and and like sneakers you could wear it with like loafers and jeans you know there's you can wear it with your bespoke suit it doesn't matter if it's liverano or cade you know these there's so much variety in how this shirt is worn yeah uh, as opposed to like a regular spread collar which is again fading out you know um 
it's just yeah it's just a really cool shirt and you don't have to have it in oxford you can have it in whatever the fuck you want you know exactly have fun with it yeah and you could get the fun shirt made of multiple different fabrics exactly and you know we talked about like oh the levels of formality with all the different cloths or details but again you know rules are meant to be broken um even if you have a denim or chambray uh ocbd and you want to wear it with a full suit go ahead like you know i that's it's cool yeah exactly um well anyway guys uh thank you for listening to the podcast uh we really appreciate you guys if you guys want to read my thought my personal thoughts that are not included in this one hour episode you can go to a little bit of rest.com where you can read my blog and um you can uh, see my thoughts there as well as the pictures of the stuff that Spencer and I talked about um, from, um, you know, all of the ones that we liked. Um, yeah. It's on there. Uh, and if you guys want to support us, um, what what can you uh, what can you do? Well, there's there's a couple things you can do. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash style and direction and become a patron. Uh, $5 gets you access to our Discord, uh, where we love to hang out. There's a lot of good discussion. I haven't been on there this morning, uh, but I'm sure if I open it up, fucking, like, there's a new message in all the channels, because that's how it is every day. It's very active. And, as we talked about last night on stream, a uh, big bonus is the Marketplace. We are just giving away clothes, folks. That's right. Maybe not giving them away, but selling, we're, people are getting deals on, on clothes that's in our right. Discord. That's right, that's right. Uh, almost all of us have gotten something from someone else. Like I've gotten, I got something uh, from Kiyoshi where I just paid shipping. Uh, I know he's done that a couple times. A lot of other people are getting good deals. So it's worth it just for that. Of course, uh, if you pay a little bit extra, $10, you get all that. Plus we say your name or Ethan says your name, unless you specify otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So let me, let me say thank you to our, our sad uh, cast fanatics. You got thank you to Audrey Jessica, Austin Malott, uh, Jeremy Ostriker, Philip Regard, and Shane Curry. Um, thank you uh, for being our top tier patrons of our Patreon. And if you, again, like Spencer said, if you want to join us, um, you can uh, you can give the ten dollars. Um, but yeah. you know, say hey, that's too expensive. I know what you can do. You can go to Apple Podcasts, give us five stars. Uh, follow us on it and uh, and leave a review. Mm-hmm. That would really help us out. You know, we're we're really we're pumping these out for you guys. We're doing podcast stuff. We're doing streaming stuff. Um, yeah. But yeah, if you want to support Every Wednesday us, say and Saturday. That's right. You, in case you haven't uh, joined in yet. Yeah, and then youtubecom slash down direction if you want to see some of our our special highlights. You can go to Twitch and see the whole thing if you want to. But the special stuff that we that we decide to keep is going to be going on our YouTube. Yeah. As well as other um, episodes. Um, of the podcast. Um, but yeah, we would really appreciate it if you guys supported us. Um, and of course, if you're using a different platform, subscribe to us on all of those things, follow the Instagram sound direction, all spelled out. Um, yeah. A uh, big thank you to our, yeah. Producer. Follow us on Instagram. Um, uh, yeah. I'm Spencer DSO. I'm Ethan M. Wong and big thank you to our producers who will never get on mic unless it's a bonus episode. Uh, yeah, you gotta pay extra for that. Yeah. Or, or you hear the, uh, the little preview that we include for you. Uh, thank you to uh, producers MJ and Matt for helping us make this podcast. Big happen. help. We love you guys. We love you. And we love, kiss you. we love the rest of you too. We'll see you guys in the next yeah. one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.